This browser hack is like social engineering script kid 101 type stuff, but it actually works. It's working. You click this little button here and you followed by boom, a pop and a PowerShell backdoor. All right, a bit of context behind this browser tag. So a few months ago, I received an email from GitHub saying that I needed to update one of my repositories. Well, lo and behold, it was not GitHub. It was a spoofing phishing technique. Wow. Upon clicking that phishing link, you are given something like the following, verifying that you are not a robot. All you need to do is click the mysterious button. When clicking this button, it's going to pop up some uh, instructions. Well, it should be. What? Wait, I think I... Clicking on the mysterious button leads you to a few little instructions. Why not click them? So you have to use the Windows R button, Windows Run, and well, what this does is execute a back shell door. So if I were a user, I could go to my Windows Run, paste in the following command, and you will see something like the following. I don't know what happened. Well, lo and behold, if you look at your good old machine, I got access, PowerShell access. Okay, so this is the vulnerability click fix. Who am I? Boom, baby, reverse shell. <laughs> All right, so this is the vulnerability click fix. It's literally an embodiment of social engineering 101, yet it's been so effective that the Lazarus group from North Korea has been employing and deploying these attacks throughout a lot of worlds, a lot of ways that they have been doing this. And so this is literally a little small demo preview of how easy it is to set up something like click fix vulnerability. So in my demo example, I get a reverse shell. Of course, it's good old Kali Linux, but in the real world, you would actually be calling out to a C2 server, which would probably download some malicious dropper or malware package for further persistence. As we can see, there is different permutations of this so-called vulnerability. Really, it's just a social engineering technique going out into the wild Google Chrome updates, Facebook, um, the good old verify you're not human. This attack technique, so-called click fix, in its most modern permutation, kind of popped up around last September of 2024. I was actually one of the first kind of individuals to get one of these phishing emails, which was quite interesting and unique at the time. Now, ClickFix has, like I said, gone into various different permutations at this point. You can see North Korea has been using it for their attacks, and um, there is various different other elements that's going in today. What makes this attack kind of just, I don't know, unique in a way is that it's so easy and so easy to set up that it, it doesn't take much time and it can be very effective. So as you can see here, good old chat GPT, I literally just created that demo page that you saw before within one command. And you can build out various different other types of so-called clicks fi fix uh, lures in a matter of minutes to maybe make something similar like this. Now, of course, you have to get the user to still use Windows Run and download that PowerShell backdoor. However, if you are able to get that user, you can do something like this where you do Mishta, which is gonna be that so-called fileless attack. It doesn't leave a footprint and you can then download some malware and you have pwned the system successfully. So this browser hack, like I said, it's stupid. It's social engineering 101, yet it's very effective and super easy script kitty like to set up for beginners. In terms of prevention, of course, there's a lot of different ways you can go about doing this. Most obviously, getting your users not to use Windows Run would be probably one of the biggest, most effective ways against these types of campaigns. But if you are, let's just say, a user, an individual who perhaps, you know, I don't know, is not really thinking at the time and it uses Windows Run or just doesn't know about the, the maliciousness of this, what can you do? Well, like I said, lots of things. A possible prevention idea is through ring fencing. This is something I've been talking about recently in previous videos. Ring fencing basically allows you to decouple application access. So for example, if you're a user, you don't want them to be using Windows Run, you can disable that in GPO, but perhaps there are legitimate use cases for Windows Run. So what you can do is deploy this so-called ring fencing. Here we can see a PowerShell policy ring fencing implemented. What this basically allows you to do is still run PowerShell, 
but PowerShell will only be able to run in a standalone environment. So if we do permit with ring fencing, and then we click save, we can deploy this policy. Now, if we go to our application allow list here, you can see various other different types of Windows applications. For example, we could also ring fence Windows command prompt, uh, maybe even do scheduled tasks if we wanted to. In the context of click fix, it's gonna be probably Windows command prompt and your various different shells like PowerShell. So once you deploy this policy out into the world, you should be able to theoretically prevent something like this because PowerShell won't be able to be spawned from Windows Run. So deploying that policy, Windows R, let's just say I were to paste that command in, as you can see, PowerShell spawns, but then it is blocked access. That is like literally one of the most effective, easiest ways to do it because you can still give your like you know your user a PowerShell access if you're a developer or perhaps you are a Windows administrator, you can still do your Windows PowerShell things. So I wanted to put this attack scope on everyone's purview. Be aware of it if you're receiving phishing emails that have you go to a link to copy. This browser hack is stupid, yet it's very effective. And Social Engineering 101, it still really is working in the favor of attackers today. So little quick video, a demo, and you know what it is. Until the next time, have a good day.